The deployment of 5G standalone networks will herald a cloud-native era for the telecom sector. And to find out more about this, I'm talking today with Charles Furland, Vice President and General Manager, Edge Computing and Communication Service Providers at Lenovo, and Laurent Darico, Infrastructure Innovation and Engineering Director at Orange. So, Charles, what does a cloud native setup look like for a 5G standalone deployment? Oh, good question. Hello, and thank you for having us. Um, well, the cloud native obviously is more, or the telco cloud native is a more agile, more automated cloud infrastructure. What we have put in place with Orange is a pod of server or rack of server in the US and in uh, France in our respective lab that are uh, collaborating with our subject matter expert in our respective areas, uh, running a 5G core network and a Cloudify 5G RAN as well. And we use a technology called Lenovo Open Cloud Automation to automate the deployment of this infrastructure in both locations. Okay, great, thanks. And Laurent, what is the orange perspective here? Well, for us, um, cloud native setups implies that we really leverage on cloud infrastructure. Uh, that uh, means that we will uh, fully benefit from the volatility, the lifecycle management, and on demand infrastructure that cloud allow. Um, the aim is uh, to be able to deploy the right infrastructure where it is needed and when it is needed. Uh, right infrastructure deals with specialized hardware in some cases, but when it is needed, we must have a an standardized and an open way um, to manage it and to maintain a loose coupling between hardware and software and to avoid uh, lock-in. Uh, this also implies new model for operation for telco context. Of course, it will be fully automated, uh, where infrastructure will be considered um, as cattle and not pet. Uh, this is a huge change for telco. Yes, it really is a, a big change. And there's lots of partnerships and collaborations happening in the industry as a result. Uh, can you tell us about the partnership between Lenovo and Orange? Uh, Charles, let's start with you. Thank you. Um, yes, with Orange, we're pleased to have put together a joint innovation program uh, over four years ago. So this is the fourth year that we're running this program together. Each year we set a team that we will explore and we have subject matter experts in each company uh, working together towards the solving these these um, these problems or these teams that we set or, or the goals that we set ourselves at the beginning of the year. Uh, we started with hardware composability, uh, evolved to uh, power management and if, how to efficiently use a acceleration hardware acceleration techniques uh, and evolved this to now looking at technology that, that includes 5G networks and as well as uh, automation and how to automate this infrastructure. So this collaboration is really the best of both worlds where Orange provided some real life use cases and Lenovo engineering team is working with the Orange engineering team to, towards uh, finding solutions to, to these objectives and these real use cases that we have to solve in, 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 uh, during the year, yeah. Uh, and Laurent, what is your view on this collaboration? Yeah, we are very happy to have a joint uh, partnership with Lenovo because uh, we are working uh, inside this partnership to make in real condition uh, what we have just explained uh, about uh, cloud native uh, uh, networks. Uh, that is to say, we are building complete containerized and automated solution. Uh, we are trying to optimize the hardware usage and energy consumption, um, in particular with uh, acceleration technologies, uh, thanks to, to Lenovo. And, and um, we are now focusing on uh, RAN uh, because, of course, um, edge use case um, must be uh, more studied um, because they are representing uh, numerous deployments compared to central data centers and uh, uh, optimization will be very important there. Now, as part of your collaboration, you focus a lot on energy consumption. Uh, is this an important topic for Orange? Yes, uh, clearly Orange uh, is engaged on energy and carbon limitation. Uh, we are committed to achieving a net zero carbon emission by 2040 and we expect to reach uh, this target 
uh, by reducing by 30 percent uh, emission uh, between 2015 and 2025. Uh, on 5G, uh, the technology enabled to deliver more and more data uh, for less energy. But uh, as um, a lot of work has been done on radio, we must still work on the software part and um, want, we want to optimize this uh, consumption uh, also. So there's uh, still a, a lot of work to do on this part. Okay, great. Uh, and Charles, what is Lenovo doing to help reduce energy consumption in networks? Obviously, energy efficiency is super important at Lenovo as well. Recently, the US Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, recognized Lenovo as one of the top 30 tech and telecom company using green power. So this is important because as we're building data centers, uh, these data centers typically consume 50 times more power than a typical same space office. Um, so we've worked and collaborated closely with Orange in developing a, measure, a plugin or to measure the power consumption, not only at the system level, but at the VM level and soon at the container level. We've contributed this to the Yardstick project so that anyone out there who wants to measure the performance of their applications using Yardstick can add this plugin and at the same time capture the amount of power that that VM or eventually that container cons consumes. And this is really important because it gives you the full picture of the power of VM consume versus the performance it's, it gives you and allows you to make decision if it's better to offload this on hardware or to run it in software on the VM level. Okay, interesting. And Laurent, can you tell us a little bit more about Orange's existing work in terms of energy consumption analysis? Yeah, we have, uh, as um, Charles explained, um, we, we have uh, worked on uh, to, to be able to measure the energy consumption for each performance test we are doing, but um, we are still at um, servers and virtual machine level. And right now we, we want to go on the containerized uh, world and be able to evaluate the consumption at container level. This is something more complex where we need to use AI and we are working to be able to share this work um, also in open source and the work is done within the Power PI project um, in collaboration with Friends Richard's team in, uh, in RIA. Okay, great. Um, so let's talk now about the Telco Cloud. Uh, why is a Telco Cloud deployment different to a data center deployment? Uh, Laurent, let's start with you. Yeah, if we think about Kubernetes, um, it's an IT solution. It's clearly not oriented to manage Telco function. Um, for example, containers has natively one single network interface. Um, also, when we are dealing with data plane and packet processing, we need high throughputs. And this can only be achieved with uh, acceleration, uh, hardware using smart needs of FPGA or software acceleration like SRIOV, DPDK, etc. All of this stuff are not native features of Kubernetes. Of course, we can uh, um, interface this, but as it is close to, to the hardware and to the kernel level, of course, it's um, much more difficult and this is a part that is needed for, for um, to address telco needs. Uh, there are several ways to do this. Uh, of course, it's uh, always uh, um, possible to tweak the deployments of the infrastructure you, you have uh, um, deployed to, to, to allow uh, these telco needs. But we would like to do it in a more scalable way and a more industrial way. And uh, that's why we are pushing as the idea to use declarative approach um, so and, and GitOps approach to do such deployments. Uh, the idea is to define what we want um, and not how to do it and to build this uh, part that is needed on top of Kubernetes to, to manage all the telco and networks needs. Okay. Uh, and Charles, uh, what's your perspective here? Um, well, Laurent offered a, a very good answer already. I think the telco cloud is, is really more about capacity shifting uh, as some use subscribers or users will move throughout the infrastructure at different, at different time of the day or different time of the year. Uh, 
the infrastructure needs to be able to adapt and follow that 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 the the users and the capacity needed at the right place. So we focus a lot around automation. Uh, that's why we use a tool called Lenovo Open Cloud Automation that allows us to uh, automatically discover the hardware in the infrastructure, the server infrastructure, discover put that into an inventory, define blueprints uh, that goes from configuring the server, configuring the network, the storage, all the way to the cloud layer. Uh, like Kubernetes, and and execute these blueprints. So when capacity or demand shift from one place to another, we're able to reallocate resources in different part of the infrastructure. Uh, that's essential in the data center, of course. Uh, but when we're looking at 5G and edge computing, where more and more these resources are hundreds of kilometers or days away from uh, the uh, central office, uh, we need to have the automation portion absolutely nailed down so that we can bring up more capacity and bring up more servers uh, in a completely autonomous fashion. So for me, this is perhaps the uh, the autonomy and the automation, sorry, is perhaps the most important aspect of it is all. Okay, so uh, as you mentioned there, automation is absolutely key to next-gen telco operations. Uh, Laurent, can you tell us about how Orange is automating its processes? Yeah, of course, uh, automation is, is a must-have, and there are there is no way to to deploy massively um, w without this automation. And um, uh, as uh, we said, um, we want to manage all this infrastructure in an automated way. And um, when we are talking about containers, for example, um, this uh, we need to automate from uh, the bare metal until the network function. And um, we are working uh, right now to be able to use a modern way to do this automation, allowing descriptive um, solution and GitOps mode to do this uh, since the bare metal level. And we are leveraging on the tools named Cluster RPI and Argo CD to, to build a solution that would allow to, to describe all the infrastructure as Kubernetes resources and to have this deployment uh, automated. And we hope that we will be able to share this in open source uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, and Charles, it, it seems that Lenovo has plenty of capabilities to be able to help here. Correct. So, and we talked about automation, and I already introduced Lenovo Open Cloud Automation as one portion, but this is focusing on the infrastructure. What we're collaborating with Orange is how do we deploy the applications on top of that so that the right application is at the right place uh, to respond to an increase in user demand uh, or more performance required at specific areas. And, and most of these orchestrators only look at uh, assume unlimited capacity, uh, which is not the case in many of the situation. So if a performance of an application degrade or there's more users in a certain area, the orchestrator typically assumes that, hey, let's deploy more more instance of that application, uh, assuming there's unlimited capacity. That being said, through Lenovo Open Cloud Automation, we're able to resurface the capacity available so that the orchestrator tool can decide to rede redirect traffic somewhere else, uh, allocate more application, uh, take full advantage of the hardware acceleration available at that edge site, uh, so that we're ba basically tying together what the application capacity, what the application actually need with the infrastructure capacity. And that's really closing the loop in having a full automation uh, infrastructure. So uh, what's next for the Lenovo and Orange partnership? Uh, Laurent, let's start with you here. We are very happy to, to continue our innovation partnership with Lenovo. We have already explored several subjects. Um, the next one will focus on RAM, um, improving the way we are uh, automating deployment in a containerized uh, mode, and also experimenting sharing and uh, uh, being still focused on energy consumption. Uh, but. Um, Independently of the subjects, uh, for me, what is very important is the way we are working with Ledonovo, that is a, a very open, adaptive, and concrete manner to, to, to work and to handle the subjects. And we are very happy with that. Okay, great to hear. Uh, and Charles, where do you see this relationship going? 
Thank you, Laurent. We also appreciate the collaboration here uh, going on the fourth year. Uh, as Laurent mentioned, we looked at some of the fundamentals on the infrastructure, hardware composability, hardware acceleration, power consumption, all the way to cloud native 5G infrastructure. Um, now, as we're looking at more automation to deploy this and, and manage this, I think the next natural step is to look at, at um, uh, AI ops, so how do we self-heal this infrastructure in case of certain events or predict some events or some failure before they occur so that we can build in more resiliency into the infrastructure. Uh, I think this is gonna come more and more important as the infrastructure is no longer on a, uh, a central office or central location, but it's getting diversified and in, in, in remote access into a private 5G network on enterprise premise and factories and in, in uh, warehouses and locations like this. So as we expand the network into different areas, the AI ops and, and really the automation of a private 5G network becomes really important. Excellent. Well, it's been great to hear about how Lenovo and Orange are working together. Charles, Laurent, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, Ray, and, and thank you, Laurent, for uh, the great collaboration. Much appreciated. Thank you, Laurent. Bye.